In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Well, we brought the weather with us this morning, haven't we? So we've got nice sunny weather outside, and we're going to create some nice sunny weather inside as well. It's very good to be with you on this uh, Sunday after Epiphany, and what a last Sunday after Epiphany now. So we're still giving thanks for our Lord's birth and the visit of the wise men and all the rest of it until we enter into uh, the Easter period as it uh, arrives. So we're still celebrating Christmas here, even though the Christmas trees are down. So our first hymn this morning is hymn 242. 242. And the first line of the hymn is immortal, invisible, God only wise. desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. God so loved the world, he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins. To be our advocate in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments. The day of peace be with you. Almighty Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you 
in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to the people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Stand and pray. Almighty God, in Christ you make all things new. Transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace. And in the renewal of our lives, make known your heavenly glory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Would you like to be seated for the readings? A reading from Isaiah. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until her vindication shines out like the dawn and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication and all the kings your glory. And you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. <coughs> you shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. You shall no more be termed forsaken, and your land shall no more be termed desolate. But you shall be called, my delight is in her, and your land married. For the Lord delights in you, and your land shall be married. For as a young man marries a young woman, so shall your builder marry you. And as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall your God rejoice over you. This is the word of the Lord. Second reading is taken from Paul's letter to the Corinthians. Concerning spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were enticed and led astray to idols that could not speak. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says, let Jesus be cursed, and no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Now, there are varieties of gifts, 
but the same spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same Lord who activates all of them. In every one to each is given the manifestation of the spirit for the common good. To one is given through the spirit, the utterance of wisdom. And to another, the utterance of knowledge according to the same spirit. To another, faith by the same spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the one spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, the discernment of spirits. To another, various kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. <coughs> All these are activated by one and the same spirit who allots to each one individually, just as the spirit chooses. This is the word of the Lord. Our second hymn. <laughs> 113, Earth has many a noble city, 113. wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. And Jesus said to her, woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to them, fill the jars with water. 
and they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, Now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first, and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Would you like to be seated? In 1976, I went off uh, from college uh, to become a curate in Old Trafford in Manchester. Well before any uh, social medias or mobile phones or anything of that nature. A social media itself can be a good thing. In itself, it's a neutral thing. It certainly keeps people who would normally be estranged from each other in conversation. And it can help us to see how others are spending their time, living their lives. It can enable us to keep friends and family in touch with what we are doing and what we today are finding important and significant in our lives and what brings us pleasure and joy. But Another function of social media is that it can reconnect us to remake friendships with people that we have known in the past but lost touch with. Uh, as a young curate in Old Trafford all those years ago, I was surrounded by a bevy of younger people, the younger people in the church, most of whom I've lost complete contact with until today because of social media, Facebook particularly. It was a revelation then, this last week, uh, for me to receive a message on Facebook from a parishioner from Old Trafford all those years ago, where I was a curate, asking me if I was indeed the Tim Ellis that used to be curate there, and they'd liked something that I'd posted. When I last talked to this person, they were in their early 20s. And they were, as I say, part of a group of young adults in a large church community in the 1970s. She was married with a child, and she was part of a band of people of similar age who used to get together to play badminton. We used to do that in those days. Organize worship for younger folk in the church, and generally just enjoy each other's company, make church fun. And so it was a surprise and a joy in talking to this person when I asked her online how she'd been over the last 50 years when she told me that two years ago she got ordained and she was now a priest. But it was the words that Christine used to describe how she felt about that that gave me pause for thought. These are exact words. It was a bit of a surprise for me when I felt called to ordination, but now I feel like I'm the real me. I feel like I'm the real me. What dramatic words. Perhaps whether drawn to ordination or not, our life of faith as Christian people is about becoming the real me. Today's gospel reading is taken from St. John. Now, St. John's gospel is one of the most challenging and deep of all the scriptures, in my view. 
And as the gospel progresses, it gives us seven signs. John calls them signs, what we might call miracles. And these signs reveal to us an aspect of our Lord's personality, his mission. They reveal to us the real him. And the first of those signs is the one that we've had for our gospel story today. And that intention of that story is to reveal something of our Lord's nature. And so we learn that his hour had not yet come. He wasn't yet the one who, through his death and resurrection, would change the course of human history forever and change our destinies as Christian people too. And yet, even though his hour had not yet come, we learn that he was capable of changing water into wine. He is the one who can change the watery, insipid, and dull nature of our lives into rich, full-blooded, intoxicating wine. Through him, you and I can be the real us. Elsewhere in the rich gospel, we hear Jesus offer a promise, not just to the people who heard him in those days, but to all of us. He says this, the thief comes only in order to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I came that they may have life and have it in all its abundance. And this, it seems to me, is a much neglected aspect of our Christian life. It is the understanding that the observance of our faith and our discipleship with Christ is meant to deepen our experience of life, to enhance our grasp of the nature of what it means to be alive, to raise us up, to help us all to grow into the real me. St. Paul grasped this, and in his letter to those early Christians in Ephesus, he writes that they should have a love of the life of faith, and they should live it to the full. And these are his words. Until we all reach the unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. He develops those ideas in today's gospel, where he uses very florid and grandiose language, and he describes the gifts that are going to be given to us as we grow to maturity, as we grow to become the real us. But the church, in its wisdom, has codified these things, called them the gifts of the Spirit. But Paul could have said just as easily other gifts, attributes of Christ to describe what Christian maturity looks like, what being the real me looks like. He could have told us as well that we would be people of peace, of love, of compassion, of forgiveness, of understanding, of self-sacrifice and joy in the mystery of life. When these things are in us, we become ever more the real me. And so I leave you with a story about that journey. A Cherokee elder was teaching his young grandson about life. And he said to his grandson, a fight is going on inside me. It's a terrible fight. It's between two wolves. The one is evil. And he is anger, envy, sorrow, regret, greed, arrogance, self-pity, guilt, resentment, inferiority, lies, false pride, 
superiority, self-doubt, and ego. But the other is good. And he is joy, peace, love, hope, serenity, humility, kindness, benevolence, empathy, generosity, truth, compassion, and faith. And my son, the same fight is going on inside you and inside every person on earth. The boy thought for a minute, and then he asked his grandfather, and grandfather, which wolf will win the fight? And the elder simply replied, the one you feed, my boy, the one you feed. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> Let us stand to declare our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. On the Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit, Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, suffered death, and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, as spoken through the prophets. Believe in one holy, catholic, and apostolic church. Acknowledge one baptism, forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please kneel or sit for our prayers of intercession. Still, the presence of the Lord, the Holy One, is here. Let's start with a prayer from St. Augustine of Hippo from 400 AD. Said in the cathedrals, the churches, the monasteries, the convents for 1600 years. Grant us purity of heart and strength of purpose, so that no selfish passion may hinder us from knowing your will, no weakness from doing it. Grant that in your light we may see light clearly, and in your service find our perfect freedom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. So we gather here today to thank our Father in heaven for all that we have, to worship him in his glory, to offer our prayers to him, to join in the Holy Sacrament, the Eucharist, with millions of people around the world in the various churches of Christ. Let us just take a moment now to say thank you to our Heavenly Father in whatever way we feel appropriate. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we pray for the Queen 
and her continued good health. We pray for the government of this country. Eternal Father, light of the nations, in Christ you make all things new. Guide our nation in the coming days through the inspiration of your spirit, that understanding may put an end to discord and all bitterness. Give us grace to rebuild bonds of trust, that together we may work for the dignity and flourishing of all peoples through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We thank you, Father, for the skill of the scientists who've developed so many different and successful vaccines to combat COVID-19. But we think of the rest of the world and the difficulties in so many places in tackling the virus and in securing enough vaccine, and in some cases, even oxygen and medical equipment. Father, we pray that the political leaders in this world will, with their combined wisdom, find a way to help all those countries of the world in their fight to control and suppress this virus. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. We pray for peace in this world. Make your ways known upon earth, Lord God, your saving power among all peoples. Renew your church in holiness and help us to serve you with joy. Guide the leaders of all nations so justice may prevail throughout the world. Let not the needy be forgotten nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Make us instruments of your peace and let your glory be over all the earth. For be still, for the glory of the Lord is shining all around. We pray today for all people who throughout all the world are suffering for their faith and belief in the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray that they may be strong through the power of your Holy Spirit. And we lift to you, Father, for your blessing, the organization of open doors. And we pray for protection for the often dangerous work that they do. Lord, in your mercy. And here in this parish, we lift to you Bishop Pete, Bishop Sophie, our associate priest Angie, and all those who are in the ministry and pastoral teams in this parish who do so much for us all in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, for them. We pray that the Holy Spirit will continue to guide them in a truthful and loving witness to Christ. Lord, in your mercy. And at this moment also, Father, we lift to you the work and the uh, meetings which are going on in this parish in the diocese to find new priests and in particular the meeting which is coming up in this coming week with the archdeacon where there will be further conversations about continuing the furtherance of seeking a new priest and we hope and pray father that somewhere there will be a priest in this diocese in this country who will hear the call from you to come to this parish. Father, Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. The diocese prayer, living God, Jesus calls his followers to seek first your kingdom. Renew us as we make your love known. Release us to share freely together in mission and rejuvenate us to be fruitful in your service. Give us courage, wisdom, and compassion that strengthened with the grace of the Holy Spirit, we may, as the Diocese of Sheffield, both flourish and grow in Christ our Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Watch over, dear Lord, those who wake or watch or weep tonight, and let your angels protect those who sleep. Tend the sick. Refresh the weary, sustain the dying, calm the suffering, pity the distressed. We ask this for the sake of your Son, 
our Lord Jesus Christ. And in a moment of quietness, we name in our hearts those known to us personally who also need your blessing, help or guidance for whatever afflicts them or is a burden to them. Lord Jesus, embrace them all in your loving grace and healing power. Help us to remember that however dark the valley, the darkness does not hide us from you. May it not hide you from us, but may we know that you are always near us, sharing our burden and entering into our grief. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Be still, for the power of the Lord is moving in this place. In this moment, let us enjoy this time for our own personal prayers. We're so powerful, all praying together in our various ways. Let us just pray to our Father in heaven for what we want in the coming days and weeks. can be so powerful a moment for Jesus said that whatsoever we ask the Father in his name we will be heard Lord in your mercy I conclude with this one chorus thank you oh my Father for giving us your Son and leaving your Spirit till the work on earth is done. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Would you like to stand? Now, of course, uh, because of COVID, we can't actually share, physically share the peace with each other, but we can uh, gesture, wave to each other. Uh, and I'm told that one of the great revelations of uh, the COVID pandemic has been that you can actually see people smiling through masks because it's the eyes, the eyes that smile. So when you uh, wave at people, smile as well. The day spring from on high shall break upon us and scatter the darkness from before our path. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. So let's offer one another a sign of peace. Uh, next him. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, 124. Father of heaven, whose love profound. 124.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Be present, be present, Lord Jesus Christ, in the breaking of bread and the drinking of wine. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word, through whom you have created all things who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our saviour. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh. And as your son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. <laughs> And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, 
and looking for his coming in glory. We celebrate this memorial of our redemption. And as we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Hugh and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine kingdom of power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed.
Some more breads. Uh, yeah, we were short, so. I'll just, I'll just wait here for a second and we can get some more breads. All right.
you nourish us with your word who is the bread of life fill us with your holy spirit that through us the light of your glory may shine in all the world we ask this in the name of jesus christ our lord amen almighty god we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your son jesus christ through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. So if you would like to uh, uh, come out for the, uh, uh, the notices, I think this, this is where we have the notices, is it? Are you ready? <laughs> there you go. Hello, everybody. But first of all, I'd like to say thank you to Bishop Tin for uh, doing our service today. It's lovely to see him back in this church. And thank you for bringing the weather. Uh, we'd just like to actually congratulate Tom Ogley in the choir here. He reached his 92nd birthday this past week, and he's still in the choir. And I think that deserves a round of applause and a little bit of a sing song. saying thank you very much uh we have decided i'm hoping this will bring smiles to your faces that coffee will resume again next week uh, at st john's and uh, thank you for allowing us to do that so we will try and resume coffee unless other things happen thank you thank you congratulations to tom how, how wonderful Fantastic. I, I hope I look at like you at 21, Tom. That's all I can say. 
Fantastic. Well done. Uh, we're going to have our final hymn, which is hymn 270. Um, I did wonder where you were all coming from at communion. I thought it was never going to end. <laughs> but, uh, but that's a good thing, isn't it? You know, so uh, hymn 270. And in a second, I'll tell you what the first verse is. Jesus is Lord. Creation's voice proclaims it. Peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your minds and hearts in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Thank mm -hmm. you.